Welcome everyone to Edureka YouTube channel. My name is Saurabh and today we are going to talk about who is a DevOps engineer. A lot of people have this confusion whether a DevOps engineer is a developer or is he an admin or a tester or is he responsible for the entire software delivery life cycle. So I'll be clearing all of your doubts in this particular session. So let's move forward and have a look at the agenda for today. So this is what we'll be discussing today. We'll begin by understanding who is a DevOps engineer. Then we'll understand what does it take to become a successful DevOps engineer. Basically, we'll talk about various DevOps skills. Then we are going to analyze DevOps market trend. And finally, I'm going to talk about the DevOps master's course at Edureka. So let's move forward and understand who is a DevOps engineer. A dedicated DevOps team consists of a few professionals who are each responsible for different elements, like any other team. There are two main roles in the team, the senior DevOps engineer who serves as a team leader and the DevOps engineer. The senior DevOps engineer is the person who architects and plan the complete delivery process as well as which tools will be used. Essentially, this person supervises the overall operations and understands the entire environment. The other engineers are responsible for implementing and maintaining that delivery process. But I know you guys must be thinking that the question still prevails. Who is a DevOps engineer? I mean, where these DevOps engineers come from? So let's move forward and understand that. DevOps engineers are generally developers or admins or even testers who have passion for scripting and automation. They learn few concepts that can separate them from the crowd. For example, source code management tools like Git. They have good hands-on knowledge of how these SCM tools or version control tools work. They are fully aware of concepts like branching. They even know how to connect the source code repository with continuous integration tools like Jenkins in order to facilitate automation testing and deployment. Generally, distributed version control tools like Git is preferred over the centralized version control systems. Why? Because in distributed version control system, you not only have a remote repository, but there's also a local repository, which is nothing but the copy of your remote repository. So if by any chance the remote repository crashes, you can retrieve the entire version of the project from any of the developer's hard drive. Apart from source code management tool, they should also have experience in deploying applications on Amazon AWS, Google or Azure. Real stuff that was measured in successes. Why? Because there's a shortage of people who understand IAAS versus PASS, stateful versus stateless, and something which is known as loosely coupled up. It is no longer about forklifting existing servers and applications to the cloud. Now it's about designing and deploying applications using the best of the best Amazon, Azure, and Google have to offer. We are talking about compute, networks, and storage resources at developer's fingertip. They should also have good hands-on knowledge on automation testing tools like Selenium. Knowledge on continuous integration tools like Jenkins is also very, very important. They should also have expertise with automated delivery tools like Puppet, Chef, and Ansible. Nowadays, with companies adopting microservice architecture, and because of the way resource utilization is optimized with the help of containers, knowledge of software containerization platforms like Docker is very important, along with container orchestration tools like Kubernetes. Docker is basically an open platform for developers and system admins to build, ship, and run distributed applications, whether on laptops, data center VMs, or the cloud. Last but not the least, they should also have experience with logging and monitoring tools like Splunk and NagOS. Now, allow me to give you a small summary of what all things we have discussed. We started by understanding who is a DevOps engineer. Then we understood that DevOps engineers are either developers or the operation staff with additional skills like coding, cloud platforms such as Amazon Web Services, automated test and delivery tools, and logging and monitoring tools. Now is the time to understand what does it take to become a successful DevOps engineer. So let's move forward and focus on various DevOps skills. So let's start with Linux fundamentals and scripting. A DevOps engineer should be proficient with Linux and should understand at least one scripting language. He should understand the concept of infrastructure as code, which I'm going to talk about later in the session. Cloud experience is must, and even DevOps key concepts are very, very important. He should understand what exactly is the meaning of DevOps methodology. Communication and collaboration with others is also very important. He should also have experience in building continuous integration and delivery pipelines. He should also be aware of various DevOps tools like Git, Jenkins, Docker, Puppet, Chef, Ansible, Kubernetes, NagOS, Selenium. So he should be aware of wide varieties of DevOps tools. 
So guys, if you have anything else in your mind and you feel that it is a very important skill for a DevOps engineer to master, you can go ahead and mention that in the comment section. So we have seen that to become a DevOps engineer, you require a wide variety of skills. Let's move forward and we are going to understand a few key concepts such as infrastructure as code. Here I'm talking about writing scripts that will fire off and orchestrate the complete deployment of dev, QA and production environments via tools such as Chef, Puppet, Ansible or other tools of this kind. Why? Because gone are the days when someone installs Windows or Linux from a CD. Nowadays you fire off a command that shoots out a server build, then triggers another script that installs applications, then shoots off yet another script that do configurations and validation checks. Whom do you think is going to write all this code? Not a system admin, DevOps engineer will. If I have to summarize infrastructure as code, I would say it is nothing but programmable infrastructure or writing code for your infrastructure in one central location and deploy that onto dev, test and prod environments. So let's discuss about continuous integration, delivery and deployment. So here I'm going to talk about the difference between integration, delivery and deployment because a lot of people have this confusion. So when I talk about continuous integration, the moment any developer commits a change in the source code, the continuous integration servers like Jenkins will pull that code, prepare a build. When I say build, it means compiling the source code, validating it, installing certain packages, unit testing, integration testing, static code analysis, and even packaging your application into an executable file. So when that happens continuously, it is called continuous integration. Although you don't have to build your application after every commit, you can configure it the way you want. You can build your application in the night or you can build the application after every one hour so you can configure it the way you want. Once the application is built, so when you deploy it onto the test environments for end user testing or user acceptance test in an automated fashion, that process is termed as continuous delivery, right? After this end user testing, when the application is deployed onto the production servers for release in an automated fashion, that process is termed as continuous deployment. So I hope you have understood the difference between the three. If you still have any confusion, go ahead and write it down in the comment section. So we have seen that to become a DevOps engineer, you require wide varieties of skills. You require Linux fundamentals and scripting knowledge, infrastructure as code, should be aware of how to build CI CD pipelines, various DevOps tools you should be aware of. So there are a lot of things that you should master in order to become a DevOps engineer. But let us see what industries are looking for in a DevOps engineer. So this is what Rackspace wants from a DevOps engineer. Let me just summarize that for you. They want someone who can automate and orchestrate the workloads across multiple cloud providers. Someone with automation experience with at least one configuration or deployment management system such as Google Deployment Manager, Terraform, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, etc. He or she should also have experience working with at least one of the languages like Node.js, Python, PHP, Ruby and Java. He or she should also have good hands-on knowledge with Git and Git workflows. He or she should be proficient in leveraging CI and CD tools such as Jenkins to automate testing and deployment. A DevOps engineer at Rackspace is expected to work with customers and other teams to troubleshoot customer environments to increase user satisfaction. Finally, he or she should be able to develop tooling and process to drive and improve customer experience, create playbooks. So we saw that there are a lot of skills that industries are looking for in a DevOps professional. Now we are going to focus on what are the various job roles in the market that you can apply for. Let's start with DevOps evangelist. So there are IT organizations that have evolved to exploit DevOps practices and capabilities, but there are IT organizations that are in the process of doing so. So that evolution obviously won't happen on its own. And the vital role here belongs to the person who is going to own and deliver that change. DevOps evangelist is basically your leader. Let's talk about the code release manager now. Whether you call this role release manager, release engineer or product stability manager, the focus is the same. Release managers work to address the management and coordination of the product from development through production. Typically, they work on one or more technical details and hurdles in which a traditional project manager would not be involved. Release managers oversee the coordination, integration and flow of development, testing and deployment to support continuous delivery. They are focused not just on creating but also maintaining the end-to-end -end application delivery tool chain. Let's talk about automation architect now. Because DevOps relies heavily on automated systems, this role, sometimes called integration specialist, automation architects analyze, design and implement strategies for continuous deployments while ensuring high availability on production and pre-production systems. Let's see which role we are going to discuss next. 
So this role is termed as experience assurance. So the need for QA testers is replaced by a need for experience assurance experts charged with ensuring that all the new features and functions are released with the end user experience in mind. Current expectation for a QA role is to test functionality, but the role needs to evolve user experience testing as well. Let's talk about software developers or tester. So a lot of people have asked me this question. If I'm a developer, why should I learn DevOps? So here is your answer guys. The software developer is at the heart of any DevOps organization. Under DevOps, the title of the software developer or tester may remain the same, but the new role of software developer or tester dramatically increases the scope of responsibilities. Let me tell you how. The developers are responsible not only for turning new requirements into code, but unit testing, deployment, and ongoing monitoring as well. In DevOps, they don't just build code to a spec and throw it over the wall to the QA team. All right. So these were the various DevOps job rules that you can apply for. Let's talk about the DevOps market trend. So we can see that 81% of the enterprises are using the DevOps practices. When I talk about small to medium businesses, about 70% are using DevOps practices. So here are a few stats about DevOps. So when I talk about DevOps jobs, there are 24 million career opportunities for experienced DevOps practitioners in the IT industry. 80% of the enterprises are using DevOps practices that we just saw. The average salary for a DevOps engineer is $106,000 as per Glassdoor and 22% annual growth in job opportunities for DevOps professionals during the last two years worldwide. So we can see that there's a lot of demand for DevOps professional in the market because around 81% of the enterprises are using DevOps practices. So obviously people are looking for DevOps engineers. Now let me just give you a quick summary of what all things we have discussed. We started by understanding who is a DevOps engineer. Then we saw what does it take to become a successful DevOps engineer. Basically we discussed various DevOps skills. Then we understood what exactly industry is looking for in a DevOps professional by analyzing a job description from Rackspace. Then I told you about what are the various job roles in DevOps that you can apply for. After that, we analyzed the DevOps market trend where we saw that 81% of the enterprises are using the DevOps practices along with 70% of small to medium businesses. So we saw that to become a DevOps engineer, you require a wide variety of skills. Now the question is, how should I master all of these skills? Obviously, you require some sort of structured training program that can help you gain expertise in all of the concepts that we have just discussed. That is why Edureka has introduced the DevOps Master's course. TAC is designed after extensive research on 5,000 plus job descriptions across the globe. It includes 200 plus hours of interactive learning and 12 courses. After every course, there will be a project. And once you are done with the course, you will be awarded with a certificate, which can be uploaded to LinkedIn profile with a click of a button. So this is the program schedule for DevOps masters. We have courses on Linux fundamentals, then Python scripting. Then we have a DevOps certification training where you will get a good hands on experience with all of the various stages and tools involved in DevOps, starting from version control, then continuous integration, continuous testing, configuration management, containerization, continuous deployment, continuous deliveries. So we'll be understanding all of these concepts in detail. Then there's a separate course on Docker. After that, there's a course on AWS as well as Splunk. The stack also comes with free electives that you can see in front of your screen. So there's a course on continuous integration with Jenkins certification training, mastering Git and GitHub, Puppet certification training, Chef certification training, Ansible certification training, and also MongoDB certification training. Once you are done with the course, you will be awarded with a DevOps engineer certificate, which can be uploaded to your LinkedIn profile with a click of a button. So guys, that's it for today's session. If you have any questions, mention it in the comment section. And if you're looking for online structure training on DevOps, you can go ahead and type your email ID in the comment section. We'll reply you back with the detailed course content.